What's going on everyone? So today we're going to be taking a look at my gym bag and I'm gonna be talking about all the things that I have in my gym bag. I thought this would be a fun video to make, not that I'm somebody special or of any importance or that you guys should replicate the things that I do, uh, but I just thought there may be some things that are in my bag uh, that you guys may not use or may not have even heard of. There are a lot of things that I do that are kind of I guess, I guess you could say unconventional. So there are some things that I have in here that you guys, you guys may not have ever even heard of uh, or know how to, how to use. So we're just gonna go through each pocket. I'm gonna talk about all the stuff that's in my bag, uh, how I use it, what it's for, uh, and then I'm going to have a list in the description of everything that's in this gym bag. If I can find it online, I'm gonna put uh, a link to it in the description. So if there's anything that you guys want, you guys can go and grab for yourself. So let's get started. So I've adjusted the camera angle a little bit and we're a bit more zoomed in. I think it's gonna be easier for you guys to see uh, from this angle than compared to the first one. So this first pocket is gonna be all of my like support type of stuff and I gear, I, I guess you could call it. Um, so the first thing I have in here is chalk. Uh, I train at two gyms, one of my gyms has a chalk bucket and the other one does not. When I'm training at the gym that has the chalk bucket, I'll typically just use the chalk that is there. Uh, when I train at my other gym, I tend to bring my own chalk. If you're going to bring your own chalk, don't be an asshole. Put it in a Tupperware that has a tight lid that isn't gonna pop open uh, and go everywhere. Uh, to be 100% honest with you guys, I bought this chalk like a long time ago and once it's gone, I'll probably be switching to liquid chalk just because it's, it's a lot less messy and it's a, quite a bit more inconvenient. So I'll probably be switching to liquid chalk, uh, but for now I got the old school original chalk in a Tupperware. And next up is my knee sleeves. So these are single ply knee sleeves. These are from Strength Shop. Um, I use a single ply knee sleeve because I believe that single ply sleeves are the best for physique development purposes. If you are a crossfitter, an Olympic lifter, a power lifter, whatever, uh, they have you know seven millimeter, nine millimeter sleeves. They've got wraps of different lengths and different materials. If you guys wanna know the difference between all of those kinds of things, I have a video on my YouTube where I talk about the difference between sleeves and wraps. For bodybuilding purposes, I very much prefer single ply knee sleeves, so that's what I've got here. These ones are from Strength Shop. Next up is my elbow sleeves. Very, very similar to my knee sleeves. They're a single ply elbow sleeve. Um, this brand is P-Tex, I think. It's hard to tell. The, it's They're worn off. I have literally had these elbow sleeves for like three years. I think I bought them uh, I think I actually bought them at a Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't think that I bought them online, but they these serve the exact same purpose as my knee sleeves, just a single ply. They go over my elbow. Um, both my knee and my elbow sleeves, so I have a like a reoccurring injury with my right knee and I have a reoccurring injury with my left elbow. As of this point, knock on wood, literally, um, None of those injuries are bothering me, but I still will wear my knee and elbow sleeves regardless, just kind of as like preventative. I like to keep the warmth in those joints, whether they're causing me pain or not. Uh, I feel like it helps keep me safe. And if, if anything, it's just placebo and makes me feel stronger. So I, I will wear these regardless of whether I'm feeling injured or not. Next up is the wrist wraps. Um, I obviously use these for my pressing movements. When we're pressing, we want to try and keep as much of a straight wrist as we possibly can from our from our hand down into our forearm. Um, for most people, the wrist joint is gonna be the narrowest part of this little segment here, so that's where the, the least amount of stability is here. You see when people are pressing, if their hands are doing this while they're pressing, not only are they gonna cause injury potentially in the forearm flexors here, uh, they're all, they also won't be as strong. Gravity and force moves most efficiently and, and it's most strongest pathway through a straight line. Any break in the straight line, you're gonna get some loss of a force transfer, so that's where you're gonna kind of feel uh, weak in your pressing. What these wrist wraps do is they obviously serve the purpose of going around the weakest part of this segment. So they go around here Remember that I said that this point in a press is usually the weakest part because it's the most narrow uh, in circumference. This just kind of helps beef that area up a little bit and helps keep your 
keep your hand in uh, in a straight line. I believe that these are 18 inch wrist wraps. Wrist wraps will usually come in like 12, 18, or 24 inches long. Um, these are, I'm pretty sure are the 18 inches because they go around, let's see, one, two, they basically go around like two, two and a half times. Um, honestly, when these go to shit, I'll probably get 24 inch ones so that I can go around one more time. I used to have a pair of 24 inch ones that would go around one more time and I just felt a lot, a lot stronger and more stable uh, in the wrist joint while pressing. So when, when these go to shit, I'll probably use the, the 24 inches, but for now I'm using these 18 inch ones. These ones are from Chic. I've honestly had these for probably four years, so uh, no problems here with any of these. Last thing here is going to be lifting straps. Lifting straps, lifting straps come in a couple different sizes and they come in a couple different materials. Um, more often than not, you're gonna see either 21 or 24 inch wrist wraps. The main difference is a 21 inch strap is going to wrap around the bar two times. So if I was holding a standard Olympic barbell in my hand, uh, a 21 inch strap would wrap around it two times. 24 inch straps you can wrap around three times. There are some lifts that I like to wrap twice, some lifts that I like to wrap three times. So I have always used 24 inch straps just so that I can have the versatility whether I wanna wrap two or three times. Uh, I've also only used cotton straps. I've never used leather straps. I have had these for almost two years. I got these from Atomics when I bought a pair of shoes from them. They sent them to me for free. Uh, I've had no problems with these. I mean, they're starting to fray a little bit, but um, we'll see when I get into my other pocket that I have a pair of backup straps in case these were to like rip on me mid-session. But if these were to rip, I would just get another pair of 24 inch straps, uh, cotton. Uh, last thing on the straps is you will probably, if you haven't gotten these by now, you'll want to get straps that are padded on the inside. If you have straps that are just this cotton material that don't have the padding, when you grip them tight and wrap them around the bar, they will literally cut all the circulation off in your hand. I used to use straps that weren't padded when I first started using straps. And I have videos of, on my phone, this is not bullshit, from like 2017 of me doing rows or deadlifts and my hands are fucking purple and blue because the straps have cut all the circulation off uh, from my hand. So if you're gonna get a pair of straps, whether you get 21 or 24 inch or whether you get cotton or leather, always get them padded. I promise you it's going to save you a ton of pain. We're gonna move on to the other side pocket now. Uh, there really is no rhyme or reason to, to this side of my gym bag. Basically what this side of the gym bag is, is that if I have something and I don't know where the fuck to put it, it ends up here. I guess the first thing first that we'll cover is my pair of backup straps. How fitting. Um, these are a pair of straps I probably bought three years ago. These are cotton padded. Uh, these are only 21 inches. Uh, these are not 24 like the ones that are like my main pair. These are 21s. Uh, I really only have these in here because if my straps were to break like and rip mid-workout and I don't have another pair of backup ones, I'd kind of be fucked. So uh, I like to keep a pair of backup ones on me just in case mine were to rip. Next is wrist cuffs. So these are actually the cuffs that you can buy and use around your ankles for like glute kickbacks and all of that type of stuff. I do not use these for those. I use these for all of my cuffed exercises. So whether that's cuffed lateral raises, cuffed tricep extensions, cuffed rear delts, cuffed cable flies. I'm trying to think of all the cuffed exercises. I do quite a few cuffed exercises. Um, I won't go into like a great deal of in-depth detail as to why I prefer cuffs, um, but th the long and short of it is that they completely eliminate all of uh, like joint strength. So for example, if I'm doing a dumbbell lateral raise right now when I have the dumbbell in my hand, there is a, an amount of torque on my wrist and my elbow joint by default because I'm holding the, the weight in my hand. If I were to put this wrist cuff on around my wrist and have the cable is obviously attached to this, I'm not holding anything in my hand so I have no strain on my wrist joint, which therefore doesn't cause me any strain on my elbow joint. So it's, it's a much, much 
a safer and more effective way uh, to eliminate joint stress, but it also is a much better way, in my opinion, to train the muscle. Cuffed exercises just provide a contraction that other exercises don't, and that's something that you have to use a cuffed exercise to be able to understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, for those who have done cuffed lateral raises or cuffed cable flies or cuffed tricep extensions, uh, you'll know what I mean when I say that ever since I started doing cuffed, like cuffed lateral raises, I have not done a single dumbbell lateral raise ever since then. The only lateral raises that I do are cuffed variations and I just switch back and forth between seated, standing, lying, uh, et cetera, et cetera, single arm. So I will literally only do uh, cuffed lateral raises. So I bought a nice pair of cuffs so that I can do them. One of my gyms has a pair of cuffs that I can use. The other gym does not. Um, regardless of what other, whatever gym I am at, I prefer to use my own. Next is D handles. Um, again, one of my gyms has its own pair of D handles. The other one does not. Uh, first I want to make it clear that D handles uh, are not the same as stirrup handles. So stirrup handles are like the metal ones that are like the loop shape. Uh, those do not bend. These are D handles that have the plastic handle and they have the canvas strap. Um, reason for the canvas strap is obviously because of the flexibility that it, that it allows. The, the solid metal ones, they don't twist because they're solid metal. This rotates. I, I have two purposes that I use these for and actually not many of them actually involve me using them as a handle. The, the only instance where I really will use these as a handle is if I'm doing something like an assisted chin up, um, maybe some form of a tricep extension, uh, and I will use these instead of the handle that are on like the assisted chin up machine for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I can go into a neutral grip, which gives me a much better contraction for my lat. Uh, and two, the fact that my wrist can rotate uh, alleviates a lot of stress from my forearms and from my elbows. When I'm doing a lot of like pull-ups and chin-ups and things that don't, that lock my, my wrist into a straight place and they do not let me twist it, I get a lot of elbow pain. Um, so by using these, I just, like if this is the, the, the chin-up handle, I just loop these around like this and then as I'm doing my chin-ups, I can rotate my wrist freely if I want to. The other reason that I use these four is I kind of use them as like a, a stopper for a lot of my chest pressing exercises. If you guys go look at any of my push sessions, you'll see that on the first rep of all of my, my presses, I have a spotter pull the, the bar out for me so that I don't have to start my first rep from back here and press like this. I have a pec tendon injury that's here on my right side uh, and it, it really starts to bother me if I do a lot of work with my pec in the full stretch. So when I get in a machine and the machine starts back here, uh, my, my pec is already in the fully lengthened position. So this first rep, getting this first one out of here is usually really hard on my pec tendon. So I'll have a spotter that will help me take that first one out, but I will also put these behind me where the stopper is. It just gives me like a couple inches. So instead of starting back here, I'm starting a little bit more forward and it's just this couple of inches that these give me that is enough to save my pec tendon basically. Um, so I, I use these as like a shoulder saver uh, as well as a D handle, but I actually use them as a shoulder saver a lot more than I actually use them for, for their intended purpose. Glasses case, cause I got shades and uh, I gotta, I gotta protect them while I'm lifting. Nothing really fantastic about that. Uh, headphones. So these are the, these are the Power Beats 3. Just goes, I don't even know what type of headphones I have. My mommy got these for me for my birthday or Christmas, I don't remember. Um, these are wireless, these are really nice. The main reason why I wanted these is because of the loop. Uh, I just can't fucking wear normal earbuds when I train because they never stay in. And I don't really like the over the ear. Uh, headphones because they end up falling off mid-set. So I, I really like these. I mean, I'm honestly not like a tech guy, so don't ask me questions about sound quality and all those types of things. Really, the main reason that I like these is the fact that they're wireless and they have the ear loop. If something were to happen to these, to be 100% honest with you, I'd probably go on Amazon and buy like a cheap $20 pair of wireless headphones that are exactly like this with the ear loop. 
Uh, I don't, I'm not really a big like sound guy, so that's not like super important to me. It's more or less about just like how practical are they? Are they gonna fall off when I'm training? Then I don't want them. Next is Quan Lung. So Quan Lung is like a, it's a menthol rub basically. It's, it's a lot like Icy Hot. Um, I'm just saying this off the top of my head so I could be wrong, but I believe that the, like the Icy Hot formula is only like 5% menthol. This is a 16% menthol solution, so this is a lot higher uh, of a menthol solution. It gets quite a bit warmer. Um, I will use this, depending on how fucked up I am, on how injured I am, basically determines how much I use this. Right now, before every push session, I'm putting this on my, my pec delt tie-in right here before every, every push workout and before every leg workout, I'm putting this on my right, uh, like my right hip and my right adductor area because I those, those are two reoccurring injuries that I have that I just can't seem to, to find a way around. So, so basically what this does is this just gets really warm and it keeps a lot of blood flowing to that area and it helps me keep that area safe. So I'll, I'll put this on my pec again before push sessions and I'll put it on my hip adductor area before leg sessions. Right now, I'm, I don't think that I'm using it for anything on pull, which is good. Um, I obviously don't be wanting, I don't want to have to use this every day, um, but if, if an area is tight, I need to bring warmth to it. So that's what this is for. You can find this on Amazon. It's like a Chinese, it's a Chinese oil, but you can find it on Amazon. It, it sounds exotic, but it really isn't. So we're getting into the third and final pocket of the gym bag now. This is the biggest one. Uh, this pocket definitely has, I think, the most shit in it. Um, potentially the most important shit, too. So first things first is a foam roller. Uh, this is actually not my foam roller. This is my girlfriend's foam roller that I have stolen and commandeered as my own. Um, a lot of people may argue that foam rolling doesn't do a whole lot. I just, I just don't know from anecdotal experience that I agree with that. I always feel and perform significantly better when I spend a few minutes before a session, like foam rolling out an area that I'm going, not necessarily that I'm going to be training, uh, but for example, like on leg day, I'll roll out my, my back, um, I'll roll out my adductors, I'll roll out my calves, I'll just kind of get uh, all of the tight areas in my body loosened up a little bit. Um, I don't spend a ton of time doing it. Like I'm not a foam rolling. Uh, I don't think of foam rolling as a religion, but I do spend some time kind of loosening up areas before I train. Um, yeah, pretty straight, pretty straightforward foam roller. Uh, honestly, both of my gyms have foam rollers. I probably don't need to carry my own with me, um, but I, I still choose to just for no other reason than I like to. Next is the my massage gun. Um, this is not uh, a big name brand one, like a Hypervolt or a Theragun or, or any of those by any means. I think this one was like 40 or 50 bucks uh, off of Amazon. Um, to be 100% honest with you, I don't know if I really like it. Uh, it's maximum speed. It's got six speeds, and even on its six speed, it's really not that fast, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really do what I want it to do. Um, I've used a Hypervolt many times before and it, it's considerably better than this. So I'm, I'm thinking of, honestly about just sending it back and then investing the money into a really expensive, really nice one. Uh, but for now I'm using this little guy and it's, you know, it does what I need it to do. It's not, it's not great. There are definitely better ones out there, but for 45 bucks, I guess I didn't really expect too much. Next is my logbook. Um, this thing is, this thing is basically my Bible. Uh, I have every, every single training session that I do, I write out in advance before I do it. Um, I have a cardboard box somewhere. I think it's in my closet that has a bunch of these in it. I have been logging I've been logging every workout that I've done for the past probably like three, three to four years at least. Uh, so I have a cardboard box that's full of these and every once in a while I like to go through them and take a look at how far I've come in the gym. I think that's, that's pretty cool. So not only does this keep me accountable, uh, if you hold on to them, then it is pretty cool to take a look back and, and see how far you've come. 
so logbook next up is my tripod um so this this is actually a pretty nice tripod to be honest uh it's got the adjustable thing on the bottom here so this slides out that's obviously your stand it's got one it's got three little latches here that um come off and adjust this obviously adjusts all, and it, this is made of like a, a fairly like feels pretty sturdy metal um what i use this for is obviously filming my sets in the gym uh when i first started i used to just prop my phone up on a water bottle or something uh if you really give a shit about your lifting you want to you want to record your lifts from the angles to where you can properly assess what you're doing and a lot of times that requires that you use a tripod i bought a tripod before it was like a two or three foot tall one uh, and that was a pretty nice one i still have that one um, this one I think expands up to like 52 inches or maybe six feet or something like that. Like it expands pretty tall. Um, and it, it's really nice. It was like 20 bucks off of Amazon. I get, I get a ton of questions in the gym about what tripod this is. And the honest answer is I have no fucking clue. I literally Amazon searched iPhone tripod and bought one that I saw that was like 20 bucks. I'll go through my Amazon orders and find the one that, that I got and I'll put it, uh, in the description but it this is very very simple uh really really nice if you care about your lifting and you want to get better record what you're doing in the gym and assess it and to do that you need the proper tools to record next up is my bands i really only have three bands i have this yellow one which as you can tell is is really really light i only use this one for like mobility purposes like warming up my shoulders and my rotator cuffs uh, it really has no purpose other than that for me, uh, but it's very, very important for that reason. So I always carry one of these with me. And then I have two of these purple bands. These are, these are actually Amazon bands. Show these here. These are Amazon bands. I think they're like 40 to 80 pounds uh, is how they work. I have two of these. Um, I use these for mobility purposes. One, I have, I spent seven years playing football and I was fortunate enough to get through football without having a lot of, of major injuries, but I did have a couple reoccurring injuries that were always happening at my ankles. So my ankle, specifically my right ankle, is pretty much fucked. It's, it's really, really tight. So uh, I use these bands for a lot of like calf and ankle mobility stuff before legs. Uh, and I will also use these during legs for actual training purposes. I can use these either as a reverse band or an accommodating band. Um, so I'll we'll either like reverse band a hack squat or I'll use like accommodating resistance uh, on a leg press. I don't, I don't wanna go into the difference of what those two things are. Uh, in this video, that's a different video for a different day, but bands, um, one of my gyms has bands, the other one doesn't. I still prefer to just buy my own and not have to take the chance that I go to a gym and someone's using them. So I bought my own and I carry them with me at all times. I don't know what you really call this thing. I'm gonna call it a booty band just because I have literally no other explanation for what it could be. Uh, I use this to warm up my glutes before I deadlift or before I train legs. Uh, I had a lower back injury, a lumbar spine injury, probably three years ago. Uh, ever since then, I've really kind of like been educating myself, I guess, on what on proper lifting mechanics and what muscles I need to strengthen in order to prevent that from happening. Uh, and I have found that if I don't consciously pump some blood into my glutes before I do any squat, leg press, or deadlift, it's hard for me to activate my glutes during those, those lifts, which puts unnecessary strain on my lumbar spine. Uh, so that's what I use this for. I'll do like abductions and stuff like this just to get some, some blood in my glutes. So carry one of these with me at all times. Uh, next is my dip belt. Um, I do dips. I do dips in both of my push sessions. One of them is a machine dip. The other one is an is an actual uh, weighted dip. Um, neither of my gyms have a dip belt, so I bought my own. So I uh, never have the excuse that I can't do weighted dips. So I got my own. Uh, I don't do weighted chins. Uh, I honestly don't know if I will ever do weighted chins, uh, but as of now, dips are something that are in long term. Uh, so I just use these to progressively overload my dips. Next, I have my actual belt. So this one is from this one is from Cobra Grips. I am not cool enough to have a belt with my name on the back yet. 
uh, and I don't know if I really have any intentions of ever doing that. Um, so this belt was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's a leather belt. Uh, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I have used like lever belts and all of those types of things. And for what I do in the gym, I personally can't justify spending a ton of money on like a lever belt or a super fancy nice belt. Um, because I honestly don't feel much of a difference between those belts and a really cheap $20 belt. Uh, before I get crucified, I want to again state that I bodybuild. I'm not a power lifter. I'm sure if I was trying to squat a thousand fucking pounds, there would probably be a difference in between the types of belts. For what I do, I only wear my belts during my squats, deadlifts, and my presses. And the only thing that I really am looking for out of the belt is tightness around my abs so that I can create intra-abdominal pressure and, and keep my spine safe. I don't care if the belt's $20 or $2,000. If I can push my gut into it and create some stability, it does what I need it to do. So for 20 bucks, this belt serves me perfectly fine. Um, and I have no reason to get anything more expensive than that. And the last thing, I'm gonna show both of these together because they're basically one in the same. Um, I carry, I think I've done the math, this is like seven and a half pounds and this is five pounds. So I carry 12 and a half pounds of fucking weights in my gym bag every session. And the reason for that is because of micro loading and basically the way that I train. Um, so I won't turn this into a rant too much, but basically the way that I train is I train with a low volume approach where the main goal every session is to progressively overload in some form from the session previous. So for example, if last week I did 200 pounds for 10 reps on an exercise, this week I either need to do 200 pounds for more than 10 reps or I need to do more weight for 10 reps. There are some exercises where we have to keep into consideration that the smallest plates in most people's gyms are two and a half pounds. So the smallest weight jump that you can make is five pounds. So if you're doing 200 pounds on a lift and you want to increase the weight in most gyms, the smallest amount of weight that you'll be able to add is five pounds. So to go from 200 to 205. On some exercises, five pounds is a lot of weight. On other exercises, five pounds feels like nothing. For example, on a hammer strength machine, if I can do 200 pounds on a hammer strength machine for 10 reps and I add five pounds to that hammer strength machine, I go from 200 to 205, I know that my reps are gonna drop from 10 to like seven, eight, maybe six. Because of the strength curve of hammer strength machines, uh, five pounds is very, very heavy on a hammer strength machine. Whereas on something like a life fitness machine, if I add five pounds, it doesn't feel like I added anything. I need to add 10, sometimes 15 pounds to feel like I even added any weight at all. For the instance of exercises that are really, really heavy, so like a hammer strength machine, I like to use fractional plates. And what these allow me to do is instead of going from 200 pounds to 205 pounds, these allow me to go from 200 to 201 to 202, 203, 204, 205. So what these are is they, they come as a pair. So they come as how you see them here. These white ones are a quarter pound each. The green ones are, let's see, I just make sure that I'm saying this right. The green ones are a half pound each. The blue ones are three quarter pounds and the red ones are one pound. So if I have two, if I have 200 pounds on the bar and I wanna go to 201, I can just add half a pound to each side and that will take me from 200 to 201. If I'm at 201 and I go wanna go to 202, I can just put these on, the one pounders, and I'll go from 200 to 202. If I wanna go from 200 to 203, I can put one of these on each side and one of these on each side and I can go to 203, et cetera, et cetera. So what these allow me to do is to micro load. I can literally go one pound at a time. I can actually go half a pound at a time. If I'm at 200 pounds, I can just put a quarter pound on each side and I go from 200 to 200 and a half. So if I want to, uh, I can add half a pound to my lift. 
And the reason why I bring this up is because the biggest fight back that I get about my style of training is my style of training is basically centered around the concept that the strongest people are the biggest people and that if you want to get bigger, a surefire way to ensure that happens is to make sure that you get stronger. A lot of people will fight me back and say that you cannot progressively overload linearly from session to session because you just can't get physically get stronger week to week to week to week to week with no break. But I think in those instances, those people are considering or maybe they're thinking that I'm saying that you add five to 10 pounds to the bar every week. I am saying that you have to progressively overload in some manner. If that means that you add half a pound and you add these little white plates and you go from 200 for 10 reps to 205, or excuse me, 200 and a half pounds for 10 reps, even though it's only half a pound more, that is still progressive overload. So the people I feel like that always tell me that you can't linearly progress and you can't linearly get stronger have kind of like put themselves in a corner because they think that I'm talking about only adding five to 10 pounds or that I'm adding five to 10 pounds per week. When in a lot of cases, I'm usually adding one pound per week, sometimes more. Sometimes I'm only adding half a pound per week. Nickel and dime your way forward and these will allow you to do that. These are the same exact thing. These are just magnetic and I use these for the cable stacks. So for example, if I'm on a cable stack and I'm doing cable curls and I'm doing it with 20 pounds on the stack, most stacks are gonna go on five pound jumps. So I can't go from 20 to 20, or excuse me, I'll, I'll, I'll have to go from 20 to 25. But in a lot of cases, say I'm doing 20 pounds for 15 reps and I jump up to 25, my 15 reps is gonna drop down to like seven or eight because I just increased the weight by 25%. With these, these are a pair of one and a quarter magnets and these are a pair of two and a half magnets. I can go from 20 pounds to 21 and a quarter pounds. And then from 21 and a quarter, I can go to 22 and a half. From 22 and a half, I can put both of these on and go to 23 and three quarters. And then from 23 and three quarters, I can go to the 25. So I don't have to make this humongous jump from 20 to 25 pounds. I can go from 20 to 21, from 21 to 22, 22 to 23, so on and so forth. And it's a very, very easy way to guarantee that progressive overload happens for you every session. Again, guys, stop putting yourself in a corner to where you think that the only way that you can get stronger is by adding five to 10 pounds to the bar every single week. You can add one pound, you can add half a pound. One pound per week added up over a year is 50 pounds on a, on a lift. Like that's considerable. I'm not talking about doubling or tripling your lifts over the course of a year. I'm talking about maybe adding 30 to 40 to 50 pounds on a lift per year for the same number of reps. And at the end of the year, that's gonna be your muscle tissue. It, it's pretty straightforward. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask in a comment or a DM. And as always, take care.